For this tutorial, I plan to use Lion Brands Wool Ease Thick and Quick. It is a size 6 super bulky weight yarn. And I'm using the color Fossil. Now this color I will be using for the body of the hat, which is this part here. I'm also going to be using the Woolies Thick and Quick from Line Brand in the color Flax. And I'm going to be using that for the hat band like I did here. You are also going to need a size L 8mm hook. To begin, make a slip knot, and we are going to do foundation single crochet. So I'm going to show you how to do that. You're going to chain two to begin. In the second chain from your hook, you're going to insert your hook, yarn over, and pull up one loop. And now we're going to do our chain stitch and our single crochet stitch simultaneously. So we'll make our chain stitch first. And now we're going to finish off our single crochet yarn over and go through both loops. So that just created a single crochet and a chain stitch simultaneously. It makes more of a vertical piece. You'll see what I mean as we go. So now we're going to go back into that chain stitch that we made and we're going to yarn over and pull up one loop. Now we're going to make our chain stitch, so yarn over and go through just one loop. And now we are going to make our single crochet, so yarn over and go through both loops. So there's our chain stitch and there's our single crochet. We made it at the same time. So if you turn it this way, this is how it would normally look from working side to side. And here's the top of the stitches that you would normally see when you work from side to side. So I'm going to show you one more time. You're going to insert your hook into your chain stitch. You're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. Now you're going to yarn over and make a chain stitch. And now yarn over and go through both loops to make your single crochet stitch. So you're just going to continue this process until you have 44 stitches total. And I wanted to show you this, I stopped at about right here because I wanted to show you it curls up. That's perfectly normal. You're just going to give it a good stretch. As you can see, here are my single crochet stitches and here are the chain stitches at the bottom. So just continue doing that till you have 44. So here I have my 44 foundation single crochet. I am going to make sure I don't twist this piece and I'm going to bring the beginning and ending stitches together. And you're just going to make a slip stitch in the top of our first single crochet here. Again, you should have 44 foundation single crochet. So we're going to make our slip stitch. Now we're going to chain one and of course our beginning chains do not count as a stitch. We are going to make a single crochet in the first two stitches. And now we're going to do a treble stitch. That's yarn over twice. Insert your hook into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop. You should have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go through two. We are going to single crochet in the next three stitches. And then we're going to push this treble stitch post out. So single crochet in the next three stitches. And while you're doing that, make sure your treble is pushed out facing you. And that's what gives us this texture, this bump here. There's my third single crochet. So now I'm going to do another treble stitch. Followed by three more singles, so we're going to push this post outward and then do our three singles. And this is what it should look like. It should give you that little dot there. And we're going to do another treble. 
You should see the pattern forming here. And you're just going to continue repeating the stitch pattern until you get to the last stitch. So you're going to do a treble stitch followed by three singles all the way around till you get to the last stitch. And I'm going to show you what to do there. So here I'm actually at the last two stitches. I did my last three singles followed by a treble. And in the last stitch, we're going to do a single crochet. So we're going to push that post forward. And now we are just going to slip stitch with an invisible slip stitch. Now that's a little different. We're not going to do a normal slip stitch. You're going to take your working yarn and put it to the back of your work. Then you're going to take your hook out of your working loop and insert it from back to front in our very first stitch. Then you're going to take your working loop and put it back on your hook and then draw it to the back. And that is an invisible slip stitch. Simple as that. Now we're going to chain one. Now we're going to make a single crochet in every stitch around. And I'd like to reiterate that you should still only have 44 stitches. We have not increased in any manner. So just continue making one single crochet in every stitch around, and I'll meet you back here. So here I am at the end. I'm going to do another invisible slip stitch. Again, put your working yarn to the back. Take your hook out of your working loop. Put your hook in the first stitch from back to front. Grab your working loop and put it on your hook and draw it to the back. Now we're going to start round four. We're going to chain one. And then we're going to make a treble stitch in that very first stitch where we joined. Followed by three single crochet, just like before. So push that post forward. And then a treble again. Followed by three singles. So push that post forward. And you should see the pattern forming here. You're just going to continue repeating the stitch pattern of a treble stitch followed by three singles all the way around until you get to the end and I will meet you there. So here I am at the end. I'm going to do an invisible slip stitch. Make sure that you are inserting your hook in the top of the treble stitch and not the chain one. Now we're going to repeat round three, which if you remember is a round of single crochet. So we're going to chain one and we're going to put a single crochet in every stitch around. And again, you should only have 44 stitches. So just continue making one single crochet in every stitch around and I will meet you at the end. So here I am at the end, I'm going to make an invisible slip stitch, which by the way, we will be using the invisible slip stitch for almost the entirety of this hat. Now we're just going to do some repeating rounds. We are going to repeat rounds two, three, four, and five one more time. So the next round that we do will be a round two repeat followed by three, four, and five. So just rewind the video and repeat the rounds two, three, four, and five, and I'll meet you back here. So here I have rounds one through nine completed. So now we are going to continue on. We're going to do another round two repeat. So if you remember, we're going to start off 
by making a chain one and a single in the first two stitches. Now we're going to do a treble in the next stitch. Make sure that you push the treble forward and we're going to make a single crochet in the next three stitches. So you're just going to repeat that stitch pattern all the way around. And I will meet you back at the end. So here I am at the end. I've got my last three singles and my treble. I'm going to push it forward and make my last single crochet of the round. And then I'm going to join with an invisible slip stitch. So at this point in the pattern, we're going to start decreasing. And I'm going to show you what your hat should be measuring at this point in time because it's important. So your hat should be measuring about 4.25 inches in length or about 11 centimeters. So now we're going to chain one and we're going to put a single crochet in the first two stitches. Then we're going to follow it with a single crochet two together. This is a decrease. Then we're going to make a single in the next two stitches, followed by a decrease. You're just going to continue that stitch pattern, making two singles and a single crochet decrease all the way around and I'll meet you back here at the end. So here I am at the end. I did my last single crochet two together over the last two stitches. Now we're going to do our invisible slip stitch. Now we're going to start the next round of decrease. So we're going to chain one and start off with a treble crochet. Now we're going to push that stitch forward and we're going to single crochet in the next two stitches. Now we're just going to repeat that. We're going to make a treble stitch in the next stitch. Followed by two singles. You should see the stitch pattern forming here. You're just going to continue repeating, making a treble followed by two singles all the way around, and I'll meet you at the end. So here I am at the end. I've got my last two singles, and I'm going to make my invisible slip stitch. We're going to do another round of decrease, chain one, single crochet in the very first stitch and then decrease over the next two stitches. Single crochet in the next stitch and decrease over the next two stitches. You're just going to continue doing that stitch pattern all the way around, making one single followed by a decrease. So you're decreasing in every other stitch and I will meet you at the end. So here I am at the end. I'm going to make an invisible slip stitch. Now we're going to chain one, make a single crochet in the very first stitch, and we're going to make a treble crochet in the next stitch. Make a single crochet in the next stitch and a treble in the next. You should see the stitch pattern forming. You're just going to make one single crochet followed by one treble crochet all the way around and I'll meet you at the end. So here I am. I've got my last treble stitch 
joined with an invisible slip stitch. So at this point, if you wanted a messy bun hat where your hair can come out the top, this is where you would want to stop. So if you want to be able to wear it as a messy bun hat, you can just stop right there and your hair will be able to come out the top. But I want a beanie, so I'm going to continue on and show you how to finish as a beanie. So now we're going to chain one, and we're going to make a single crochet in the first stitch, followed by a decrease over the next two stitches. And then another single crochet, followed by a decrease. You're just going to continue doing that all the way around, and I'll meet you at the end. So here I am at the end. I've got one more stitch here. So I'm just going to make another single crochet, and I'm going to join with my invisible slip stitch. We're going to do another round of decrease, so chain one, and we're going to single crochet two together all the way around. I just have the one stitch left, so I'm going to make a single crochet in the last stitch that's left and make my invisible slip stitch. And now we're going to just fasten off, leaving a length of tail for sewing purposes. And then you're going to want to grab your yarn needle and thread your tail onto your yarn needle. And I'm going through the front loops only. I don't know if you can see that here, but it's this front loop here. And I am whip stitching all the way around in all of these stitches. And then at the end, I'm going to cinch it shut the rest of the way. And then you're just going to take the excess into the inside of the hat to knot it off and weave in your tail. And now we are going to add our band at the bottom. I wanted to show you what your hat should be measuring once again. So I want to make sure you're on the same page as me. It should be measuring about seven and a half inches in length or about 19 centimeters. So now I'm going to add the band, but before I do, I'm going to weave this tail in. And that just closes up that gap there that was created when we joined our piece. Now I like to use a separate color because it really makes it pop. And I'm going to be joining right in the area where I ended. There are loops here that you can see of my foundation chain. I'm going to be going in the one that is towards the back that I just showed you. I'm going to chain two and then make a single crochet. And then you really need to mark this stitch because the, the puff stitch that I'm about to show you will completely cover our stitch and we'll need it later. So the slanted puff is made by working around the post of the single crochet that we just made. We're going to wrap around it by going backwards. So let me show you on this hat. You can see how this puff stitches are slanted, and that is achieved by wrapping yarn around the post of the single crochet. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to work backwards. So I'm going to go to the stitch prior to this one to my right and insert my hook into that stitch there. So not where we slip stitched. 
but into that backmost stitch that I'm showing you here. So I like to hold this loop that's on my hook with my thumb to keep it from getting bigger. And then I'm just inserting my hook into that loop there that I showed you. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop. You should have four loops on your hook. And you're just going to yarn over and go through all four loops. And then you're just going to grab that stitch marker, which I like to use bobby pins because they're sturdy. You really don't want to break your stitch marker. And then pull that stitch forward. And as you can see, it's slanting. So now we're going to skip the next stitch. And we're going to go in that back loop that I show you here. And we're just going to make a single crochet. Now, working around this post into the stitch that we just skipped, hold on to the loop on your hook and insert your hook into that stitch that we skipped in that back area. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop. You should have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all four loops. And as you can see, it's slanting. I'm going to show you that again. We're going to skip the next stitch, make a single crochet. Moving back into the stitch that we just skipped, make your puff stitch. You're just going to continue the stitch pattern all the way around, and I'll meet you at the end. So here I am at the end. Here's my stitch marker, which as you can see is very important. So tug it until you can get your hook inside of it, and then you're going to do another invisible slip stitch. Now we are going to chain two and turn. We want our puffs to slant in the opposite direction to give it a braided look. Now you're going to single crochet in the same stitch and place your marker. Very important since it's going to get buried. And this time we're going to be working into the tops of the stitches like we normally would. And we're just going to repeat the last round. So we're going to be wrapping around the post of this single crochet. So moving backwards to the right, we're going to insert our hook and pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert your hook into the same stitch and pull up a loop. You should have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, go through all four loops. That's what it should look like. We're going to skip the next stitch and single crochet in the next stitch. Moving back into the stitch that you just skipped, you're going to make your puff stitch. Skip the next stitch, make your single crochet. Make your puff stitch in the stitch that you just skipped. And of course, you're just going to repeat this stitch pattern over and over until you reach the end, and I'll meet you there. So here we are at the end, and because we have the wrong side of the hat facing us, we're just going to do a regular slip stitch. So this is the only place that you will do a regular slip stitch. Now we're going to size up a hook. This is a size P, 12 millimeter hook. And the reason I say to do that is because we are going to do a round of slip stitches and you really, really, really want them to be loose. This is really just for looks, so you don't want to do it too tight. We're going to chain one, and in every stitch around, we're going to make a very loose slip stitch. 
Again, do not do it too tightly or you will not be able to get it on your head. As you can see here, I'm pulling up on my stitches to make them taller. So just continue doing this all the way around. You don't want it to be too tight, so be sure to do it loosely. And you're just gonna continue doing that all the way around until you reach the end, and I'll meet you there. So here I am at the end. I want it to be invisible, so I'm going to do an invisible join. So I'm just cutting my yarn and pulling it all the way through the last stitch. I did not join. And I'm gonna thread my yarn needle and going under the bars of the first stitch from front to back and then through the top of the back loop of the stitch I came out of. Because it looks a little wonky, I'm actually gonna pull it tight and then it looks pretty invisible. You can't see where I joined really. So I'm going to weave this tail in really, really good. I'm gonna weave it actually to the beginning tail and then I'm gonna knot them together so that it can't come undone. You don't wanna knot it too many times because this yarn is super bulky weight and it's gonna be noticeable if you do it more than twice. And then now I'm just going to weave these tails in really, really good to hide them before I cut the yarn. And this is what your hat should look like. I'm gonna measure it for you. It should be measuring about eight to eight and a half inches in length, or about 21 to 22 centimeters in length. So now I'm going to go back in there and use this tail to sew my pom-pom button. I get these buttons from angieandbrit.com. They have the care instructions on there, so it's very helpful to remind your customer that they need to remove the pom-pom before they wash it. So I'm just sewing the button on here like I'm showing you here. I do separate the yarn strands so that it's not so bulky so that I can sew it with the same yarn. But you have to be very, very careful because this yarn will break. Once it's separated, it becomes very, very fragile. So I just knot it off like this. And... As you can see, that one broke, so just be very, very careful. So I buy these pom-poms from Amazon, and I'll link it in the description box below. But I add a piece of yarn to this elastic so that the customer has a sort of tag to remove the pom-pom with. And it also makes it so that they can put the pom-pom back themselves without a hook or without a bobby pin even. So if you do it this way, the customer can get a hold of the elastic and also the customer can put the pom-pom back on if they so desire. So I'm just gonna slide this knot through the top of the hat and then grab it from the inside. It's really easy. And then you just wrap the elastic around the button as many times as you need to, but mine are short, so I just need to do it once. And then now the customer has that tag where they can remove it before they wash it. And of course you can add your tag or however you want to to finish it. But you are done. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.